the Mason Elon Sigma F actuator is designed to power cage valves and single and double seated globe valves similar to those covered in segment one. There are three actuator sizes and each size comes with or without a hand wheel. The actuator size is determined by the valve. This is a size A without the hand wheel. The actuator with the auxiliary hand wheel enables you to move the valve stem in either direction regardless of the plug force. The hand wheel may be used easily to limit the valve stroke. An indicator shows the position of the stop. The positioner for this actuator will be covered in module 2.4. The positioner will be removed from the actuator in this segment. The actuator is a combination of the pneumatic spring opposed diaphragm type and a force amplification mechanism. Air pressure against the diaphragm opposed by a spring is the source of input power. The force amplification mechanism amplifies the input so that the output force increases as the plug nears the seat. The main lever assembly multiplies the diaphragm force nearly six times at shutoff. The main actuator components are the upper and lower diaphragm case, the diaphragm, diaphragm plate, the actuator spring and spring guides, the plate stem assembly, the main lever assembly, the link and stem connector, and the actuator yoke. The stem connector and link are connected by the stem connector pin. The link, main lever assembly, and lever support are connected by the link pin. The diaphragm plate stem assembly is connected to the main lever assembly by the lever pin and a push-on ring. The actuator action can be made direct or reverse acting by changing the location of the link and link pin. An increasing air pressure on the diaphragm of a direct acting actuator moves the plate stem assembly from left to right causing the main lever assembly to rotate in a counterclockwise direction. The counterclockwise rotation of the main lever assembly causes the link and stem connector to lower. An increasing air pressure on the diaphragm of a reverse acting actuator again moves the plate stem assembly from left to right causing the main lever assembly to rotate in a counterclockwise direction. Now the counterclockwise rotation of the main lever assembly causes the link and stem connector to lift. To remove an air to close actuator from the valve, shut off the air and disconnect the tubing. Remove the dust cover and loosen the lock nuts on the plug stem. Unscrew the plug stem from the actuator stem. Remove the drive nut and remove the actuator from the valve. To remove an air to open actuator from a valve, apply sufficient air pressure to the diaphragm or use the hand wheel to lift the plug off the seat. Remove the dust cover and loosen the plug stem lock nuts. Unscrew the plug stem from the actuator stem. Remember, never turn a valve plug when it is seated. Remove the drive nut and remove the actuator from the valve. Now work exercise number one in your workbook.
Complete disassembly of the actuator may be necessary to service or replace worn, bent, or broken parts. The extent of disassembly will depend on the location of the part or parts needing attention. To disassemble the actuator, remove all the nuts and cap screws in the diaphragm case. Remove the upper diaphragm case and diaphragm. The diaphragm plate is threaded into the plate stem assembly to compress the actuator spring. Remove the actuator spring after unscrewing the diaphragm plate assembly. Remove the yoke cover by unscrewing the four cap screws holding it in place. Unscrew the cap screws securing the bearing support and remove the bearing support. Remove the support screw and lift out the lever support and the link pin. Slip out the link and stem connector from the yoke. The connector, link and stem pin are easily disassembled. Remove the main lever subassembly from the yoke and disconnect it from the plate stem by removing the push-on clip. If the actuator had been equipped with a hand wheel, the hand wheel assembly would have to be removed before removing the main lever. Reassembling the actuator is almost the reversal of disassembling it. Assemble the connector stem, link, and stem connector before slipping the stem connector into the yoke. Be careful not to damage the stem connector bearing. Connect the plate stem to the lever pin of the main lever and install the push-on ring until it snaps into the groove of the lever pin. Insert the end of the plate stem through the bottom of the lower diaphragm case. Install the main lever in the yoke, being careful to align the shaft and the lever bearing. Align the link hole with the correct hole in the main lever and insert the link pin. This actuator, when completely assembled, will be an air to retract or reverse acting actuator. This figure from the Mason Elan instruction manual explains the correct hole location and link alignment. The instruction manual will be included in the reference material in the back of the student workbook. If the actuator is equipped with a hand wheel, follow the instructions to install it. Then slip the support lever over the shaft and link pin and fix them in place with the support screw. Apply Loctite 242 to the screw threads. Locate the bearing support on the roll pins and shaft. Push it into place and secure it with the screws. Fully stroke the plate stem assembly to ensure freedom of movement of all moving parts. Grease the diaphragm plate screw, plate, upper spring guide, and bottom of the lower diaphragm case with mollycoat G and place the spring in the lower case. Install the diaphragm plate assembly by screwing the diaphragm plate into the plate stem assembly until the upper spring guide bottoms on the plate stem assembly. The initial pressure, or the pressure at which the actuator stem starts to move, was preset when the actuator was assembled, and adjustment is not required. Place the diaphragm over the diaphragm plate. Place the upper case over the diaphragm and bolt together with the cap screws and nuts. Replace the yoke cover and fasten it in place using the four cap screws. Now work exercise number two in your workbook.
The actuator fail-safe action can be changed without any additional parts by a single relocation of a pin. The following example will be changing the action from reverse to direct acting. If the valve is in service, get the operator's permission, make sure you have the necessary permits, and isolate the valve. If the valve has a positioner, it must be removed. Positioner removal and installation will be given in Module 2.4. Apply sufficient air pressure to the diaphragm to lift the plug off the seat. Remove the dust cover, loosen the lock nuts on the plug stem, and unscrew the plug stem from the actuator stem. Unscrew the four cap screws and remove the yoke cover. Remove the support screw and slide the support lever away from the main lever assembly. Relocate the link pin, lever support, and connector link in the correct location on the main lever. Apply Loctite 242 to the threads of the support screw and install it. The instruction manual has an explanation of correct hole location and link alignment. Mason Elan recommends the following plug stem adjustment for most of their single and double seated globe valves and cage valves. For air to close valves, separate the plug stem and actuator stem. Push the plug stem down until the plug seats. With no air pressure on the actuator diaphragm, Position the lock nuts and indicator disc on the plug stem so that the distance from the top face of the top lock nut to the bottom of the actuator stem is equal to the required valve stroke. For the 41400 series valve, an auxiliary plug stroke must be subtracted from this distance. This series is a tight shut-off balanced cage valve. Screw the plug stem into the actuator stem until the indicator disc and lock nuts contact the actuator stem and tighten. Apply sufficient air to the actuator to fully stroke the valve and check the actual stroke. If the stroke is not correct, make further adjustments between the plug stem and actuator stem. For air to open valves, apply sufficient air pressure to the actuator diaphragm to retract the actuator stem to its maximum stroke. Adjust the lock nuts and indicator disc by screwing them onto the plug stem as far as possible. Tighten the lock nuts and use them to screw the plug stem into the actuator stem as far as possible. Never put pliers on a plug stem. Pliers would damage it. Release the air pressure from the actuator and unscrew the plug stem from the actuator stem until the plug contacts the seat. Apply sufficient air pressure to the actuator to raise the plug from the seat. One quarter inch is enough. Turn the plug stem out of the actuator stem one full turn. For the 41400 series, turn the plug stem out of the actuator stem one full turn plus the auxiliary plug stroke. Loosen the lock nuts and run them up until the indicator disc and lock nuts contact the actuator stem. Lock them in place. After the plug stem has been adjusted, release the air pressure and adjust the travel indicator. Now work exercise number three in your workbook.